<laughs> the tech wizard. <laughs> um, it is 7 o'clock on Thursday, February 23rd, 2023, and I will call the Finance Committee meeting to order. Um, I have with me Tom Parkins, Mike Pratt, Dean Hodges, Andy Olderman, and Peter Twining, and I believe Maury will be joining us shortly. Um, so, our goal tonight, and Gail Hunter's on the phone taking notes. <coughs> And in the room also from the select board are Ann Harrison and Kathy Bilatus and um, Becky Jakes is on the phone. You all are muted? No. You can't, you can't hear us, Becky? Can you now hear us I now? Can. Okay. okay. <laughs> Can you and hear you? <laughs> um, <laughs> So our goal tonight is to get it done, get it done. <laughs> as quickly as possible. So we have a number of operating budgets yet to be covered. Um, and I have a list, but this is the wrong list, so this must be the correct list. Um, so. We had Parks and Rec celebrations on hold. Ah, flowers. Um, and based on what you sent us, Greg, the $1,000 flowers is a separate. And Gail, so, John Brown just joined us for your information. Um, so that could be added to the memorial account. So we already have a line on it for memorial. If we add 1000 then 1000 of it goes to the flowers. So that's one way of doing it. So if you look at uh, other... So we moved the memorial to 4,000? Okay. Sorry. I'm worried. Sorry, I'm late. No problem. We're on a roll tonight. Um, so the total celebration budget would be 14,000 then? No, there was a brief discussion about the... Uh, police details, the police overtime that's needed, and whether or not you felt that it would be appropriate to put those dollars into the 4th of July account. Currently, it's, it's covered out of the overtime account with yeah. police. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, we did talk about it, but I thought we were leaning towards not, we, like, just leave where it is, understanding that, yes, someone might have the awkward question and ask about the OT and the police budget, and then there's just... The answer is, well, X dollars of that police of tea relates to July 4th. And, and I think going forward in future years, I think it would be helpful if in that OT budget we understood we exactly what was for 4th of July, like, what was for Memorial, so it was clear it wasn't just covering right. staff shifts. Yeah, um, if, if anything, to that point, you might even have, if you could, if it's not hard for Andrew, you have a separate room some, some, within, within some, police so that you can... Right. But you, you want to keep it in its home, which yeah. is police. Yeah, that's I think, fine. I think. Okay. So I have, do I have a motion to approve $14,000 for the Parks and Reg public rec, <coughs> public celebrations? So moved. Andy moves. Do I have a second? I'll second. Dean seconds. Any discussion? Take a roll call vote. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom. Dan. <laughs> yes. Lori. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> okay. So we got the celebrations done. Okay. Um. Building, no, building we did. Treasure was on hold for, <coughs> for insurance. For insurance. Yeah. Um, and so we provided a new number. Um, so the, the increase on the rate, a little higher than I was hoping. Uh, we, we, we did plug in eight. I was hoping we would come in close to the five. Um, the number is 7.15. Um, we, we've done really well the last five, six years. Um, 
but I think uh, we're going to see a few years of of close to close to double digit. Hopefully, we can stay under double digit. Um, and then, so this this current year budget, um, the one point three uh, and change. Um, we're spending every penny of that this year. We've had a few additional uh, staff who were on a spouse sort of uh, program switch over to the town. Um, and so we that budget, the number we use this year uh, is a good number. So we increased that, <coughs> the, the 7.15, and then added two more um, here in the plan. One is the net. Um, we're dropping dispatches, but we're adding... Two and two, two fire, two police. Ah, there's the answer. So um, that's the netting that you did. I couldn't understand right. the numbers. Yes, yeah, so that was the net. And then I added one more if we get another person switching over. Right. So that's how that number came to the 1.471720. Wait a minute, what was it? 1471720. Yes. Piece of paper. Add that. So what, we, what I sent you today, should it, in the summary form, should it have that? Yep. That, that's up about thirty-five grand from the original. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How did the clear go? Yeah. It, right. right. Yes. It's an increase of about thirty-five thousand from. What so, was in the book. Yeah. Yes. So my my only comment suggestion we've talked about this. But you made the point in your email. You said part of this is because spouses are coming over, right? right. And all I would suggest, and I'm not going to get the vernacular right, but that benefit where you. Pay people to actually opt, opt out. out. Yes, we you do. Know. We do offer that. Uh, maybe we need well, to sweeten the pot. <laughs> number one, look at sweetening the pot. Number two, I think you mentioned it's it's like union by union or department. It by is, and, and it's, so you it's, said it's like union. in some places we do, in some we don't. I'm just yes. saying, the more that we, you know, do new contract negotiations, let's, yeah. you know, bring it into the mix if, yes. if it's not already there. Right. Yeah. Uh, we are introducing. Um, a high deductible plan this year. Uh, part of negotiations, we'll see how that goes. So. High deductible with like an HSA? Yes, couple it with an HSA. Saves about 10% of our premium. Okay. So, I guess and then the um, the FICA mm -hmm. went up about seven seven thousand, and mm -hmm. that's for the mm -hmm. four new positions. That right, that was an adjustment. And there was also a reduction for dispatch. Right. Again, the netting, the difference. Okay. Because I'm going to want to know exactly what the health savings and the FICA savings are with respect to dispatch. <clears throat> right. So that I incorporate it into my report regarding dispatch savings versus yes. yep. police department additions. Okay. But I'm meeting with Andrea on Monday, so we're gonna walk through this. I don't have number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On the on the casualty and liability, um, I I think I could be wrong I'm looking for just, just some high level like you know, deductibles, what's our total coverage on liability? What, what is it? Yeah, it'd just be good to know. Yeah. Um, it, it, so, on general liability, do we have a seven thousand dollar deductible? Um, um, do you know the Do you know the coverage, the liability? Two million, five million, ten million, twenty million. I, I don't know that offhand. Um, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Is Andrea on the line? Andrea, she, do you know? She, she might be able to quote that better than me. Yeah, I, I, I can pull it up. Like, we have different limits for different things. Okay. Um, same thing, we have different deductibles for different things, so it's hard to just say, like, you know, we're not covered with just, like, one amount. Um, yeah, no, no. Depending on what you're looking at. Yeah, no, I totally understood. I get about, so I'm asking specifically general liability. You know, what's the dollars we're covered for, and what's the deductible, and then property, you know. What's the deductible? What's the coverage? Um, I mean, we, we can certainly get you a, a summary of those. Yeah. Because just in general, you know, I've done a lot of this work in my professional life, and what I found is, you know, when you are willing to raise the deductible, it, you, you get nice premium savings. And, you know, the purpose of insurance is not to fix your side mirror, right? It's so that if you're 
full house burns down, you cut them like right. So, you know, same with general life. Like seven grand sounds tiny for a deductible, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, it's just worth exploring, you know, what you get in terms of reduced premium for premium versus the deducting the yeah. deductible. Yeah. Not suggesting at all reducing the coverage, right? The coverage you want. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we meet with them annually, um, and that is a discussion point that we do bring up. Um, and we've had them run numbers for larger deductibles, and the price savings isn't significant. Um, so we've kept it as I, I'd be more than willing to join in that because I've I've found the opposite quite a lot in the private sector, where like, you know, you raise your deductible and you almost save in one year, you know, in premium. That, you know, oh yeah, we haven't seen that, but absolutely. Mm -hmm. What time of year do you meet with them? Uh, usually in the late summer, fall. Okay. Let me know. I'm more than yep. Yep. Happy to have you guys. Who's the broker? Well, it's through what's called MIA, which is the Massachusetts okay. Interlocal Insurance Association. Got it. Okay. So I guess rather than vote on the treasurer's budget as a whole, we'll do it um, based on these breakdowns that were in the thing that was sent to us today. Because mm -hmm. um, otherwise I would add everything up. <laughs> so um, do I have a motion to approve the treasurer <coughs> collector collector salaries and expenses in the amount of two hundred thousand one seventy eight? Make that motion. Andy moves. Do I have a second? I'll second. Tom seconds. Any discussion? Take a vote. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Mort? Yes. And Sarah Rocha? If you want to just sort of list these next groupings. Do you have a total number? No, I'm just, you can just read off the individual numbers and then just approve one them vote. as okay. one vote. Okay. Just speed it up a little. <laughs> What's getting added in there? I'm just curious. Yeah. The treasurer, that's <coughs> salaries and expenses. That's just for the department. Right. That doesn't originally? include any of the town level, like uh, that sort of thing, which we're going to vote on now. <coughs> right, so it's like the 167 plus... Plus the 32, 32, 18, yes. 32 225. Okay, so basically everything except yeah. the insurance. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. Got it. Um, so I'll list out the next items and then we'll vote on all <coughs> of them. Um, contributory, <clears throat> contributory pensions, $1,628,887. Group health insurance, $1,471,721. Workers comp, 100,000. Fire auto liability, 135,000. Unemployment comp, 7,000. FICA Medicare, 118,796. Do I have a motion to approve those amounts? So moved. Andy moves. Do I have a second? I'll second. Dean second. <laughs> Any discussion? Questions? So this is basically <clears throat> the three insurance and the pension? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yep. Group Welcome. health, liability insurance, and then the FICA unemployment and workers' comp, plus the contributory pensions. You said the email pensions have been better than you thought, right? Yeah, we've been running 7 to 8 percent. Um, this year came in a little to run it for. And so logically that's because they made good investment decisions? Uh, it, it fluctuates with uh, our percentage of the total share and our, our current total salary. Um, so is that, you know, as, as we have some vacancies, that'll drop a bit. Mm -hmm. So it's not the actual cost like you would do in a corporate business. Mm -hmm. It's merely, what, a percentage of payroll. Yes. Doesn't matter how based on, or anything. But it is based on their projection to to um, retire the liability. 
but it's and mass. On mass. They're and not we, looking at Manchester employees and their ages and that sort of thing. They're only looking at payroll. Correct. Yeah. But if you thought it was going to come in at eight, like you can't back in and say on average all the salaries were going up eight percent, right? Like there's got to be other stuff in there. Right? No, no. The the eight percent is based on their need to catch up for lost time. So funding. Right. So to, so there is an investment kind of. Yes, there is. Yeah. It's it's they calculate it based on actuarial yeah, yeah, yeah. things, but then they allocate it to the town strictly based on payroll, mm -hmm. which to me is strange, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And do we know when it will be fully funded for the pension? It's projected to be um, uh, 34, 35, 36, that mid, mid that, 30s. Has that been stable or pushing back or changing, or has it been those years roughly? It's been pretty stable. Um, um, uh, took a big hit in 2000. <laughs> there is a um, uh, a push for this current year to increase the um, the COLA. Mm -hmm. It's normally capped at 3%. Um, special legislation was passed to allow them to do a 5% COLA I see. based on what's been happening. So that will change it. So that, that could, yeah, I, I, yeah. I was waiting to hear back from them yeah. on details yeah. and what they think that might add. Would that be for this year or next year? This year. Oh. Current year. But we don't we won't see a high we won't see a higher bill. Okay. Oh, it's it's just in their calculations that it'll hit us next year. Or yeah. the year to be on. <clears throat> okay. So pen pensions very different from OPEB, right? In the sense yes. that OPEB we control a lot of the levers. Correct. While the pension is just we're for the mercy bit. of right. a greater yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're a bit of a pawn. Yeah. <laughs> and those things we're in mercy of is, in fact, the contributory rate as well as inflation and investment performance. I assume these are yes. all players in this Correct. calculation. Yes. <clears throat> now, co contributions from employees are, are set by statute. I see. They are set by statute. Okay, that's not a negotiating issue. Right. <clears throat> Any more questions on these items? Not here. To vote? Can you just repeat the numbers again? Yes. Pensions, 1,628,887. Health, 1,471,720. Workers' comp, 100,000. Liability insurance, 135,000. Unemployment comp, 7,000. FICA Medicare, 118,796. For a total of? No well, you're doing individuals. Yeah. Sorry, that's right. That's right. Excuse me. <laughs> right, right. That's right. Yeah. So the two that were different from the original were the health yeah. insurance and the FICA. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. it looks like a total so the FICA driven by OT and the health insurance by the vendor, right? Yeah. Well, and plus we had a flow. And, and, and staff. Um, what was the total, Andy? Uh, three, four, six, one, four, zero, three. Thank you. Better than my little finger. <laughs> um, are we ready to vote? Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Maury? Yes. Sarah says yes. Okay. Look at that. Um, now we have police. And I was a little confused with the information given to us at the last meeting. Because it had salaries for two police officers in at 240000 which seemed high for me. So, so it's, it's, it's three. Not two. So it's 80 apiece times three is 280. What do you mean three? Right. You only added two. So there's the the um, counting excluded the SRO oh. previously. So it's it's what what the request is is for fourteen plus plus the SRO. But we've been paying for the SRO in the summer, or have we not? In the school budget, right? No, not in the summer. Yes. Oh, are we adding a new SRO? No, no. That's where it stays. But in terms of comparing year to year, there was confusion over 
counting the SRO or not in that 14. Okay. I'm still, I'm still confused on the SRO piece. Like right now, the SRO works a school year, and that salary goes to the school. We, we get paid. We get revenue reimbursed. from the school. We get reimbursed. It goes in our budget. It's in our budget, but we get reimbursed from the school. <coughs> did we... So we, we pay two-thirds of it into the school district, and then the school district pays 100%. Correct. If I'm following all the flows. That's, that is correct. And we weren't paying for the SRO in the summer? No, we, we were. It, it, was the, the confusion was, was counting the 14. So in, in, in working with the chief, there was confusion over um, did the 14 include the SRO or not? And in his mind, it, it never was to include the SRO. Why not? In, his, in terms of that staffing chart. I see. It wasn't <coughs> part of his force. He wasn't including the SRO as part of yeah. his force to, to yeah. enable to do the station coverage. So the SRO in the summer is providing the harbor coverage. Yes. But he didn't, he's never had the SRO in that new no. chart that showed all the boxes, right, okay. um, for the different shifts. The SRO was never part of that. But, uh, but it was part of the total of number of, of staff. Gotcha. So, so we're adding three positions, not two? Uh, I think and then, if, I, if I follow all the flows now, so we pay the school district, call it our two-thirds, right? Say 80 is the a full year salary. The school's paying us 60, but that's out of 80. So now, obviously, the 20 is on us for the summer. Well, but um, the, the 20 is on us for the summer. It's always has been. Um, they've only paid the for the for the nine months. Sure. Um, so that that has always been in the budget. But again, what I'm getting at is when um, the chief was counting heads versus. That, Andrew and me counting heads. Mm -hmm. We were counting the SRO as part of the 14, and he was not. That was the confusion. So we're so, adding three beats. So it, 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 in essence, it looks like, yes, it, it is adding three instead of, that, instead of that two. How about in terms of dollars? Mm. The prior year, what you're telling me, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, 60, no, sorry. The 80 grand was already there. It's just we were getting a check for 60 from the school district. Yes. No, but it's different than that, I think, Mike. I think but, what... When but it does show, uh, when you look at the... Um, I don't know if you have the, the detailed sheet mm -hmm. that... Right here. Yeah. That, that we provided last meeting. Oh, no, the detail from last meeting. Seems to be missing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. So we do show that... Two, that and Sarah, that's what you said. The 240 right. is that additional three officers. So we're adding three positions, not two. Okay. And what we are taking out, um, so 240 is added, we take out 108 from the reserves line, um, and we reduce the overtime by, by 7,000. So you're, you're, you're adding 240, and you're taking out 115. I'm still confused that it, it's been in the budget. There's reconciliation with the school for where the money actually comes from eventually. It wasn't in his so that, that was a, plan for those shift things. You know that thing where, he had on all the it? shifts? At the very bottom. <laughs> that's where it was at the very bottom. So that so that's gone and it's moved up and up and No, that's the still there. Okay. But to, in order to do the rest of it, it, it was it was it's not a confusion with what was budgeted or not in yeah. terms of last year's budget versus this year's budget. It was more of when we put the proposed budget together, we included we included the SRO as part of the 14. Uh -huh. And the chief said, no, I need 14 plus the SRO. Okay. So that's where that additional one is coming from. Okay. It was just it was the it was miscommunication between the chief and the Indian. You're really only adding two because you've already had the SRO. No, in they're here. adding three. I mean two bodies or two people. They're adding three. No, they're adding two. Unless, no. unless I'm missing it, they're no. adding two. No, is already in here. I mean, I know yeah. it's the difference no. in the two numbers. From a no, no, dollar perspective. The human being maybe, going maybe, maybe, to be at. Not from an org chart. From an org chart, fine, maybe. I don't know. But from a dollar perspective, right, you're telling me prior year, we were paying the full year salary benefits for SRO, right? We were paying full year. 
for two thirds of the year, we were billing the school district, so they were paying us for 75%, whatever, a school year's worth, right? So then we were on the hook financially for the summer. But we're still funding that position plus three new positions. I don't plus get three? that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Excellent. maybe the lady, okay, maybe here. Let, let me, uh, I have a question when there's an opportunity. Yes, Kathy. When we met jointly at the select board in FinCon and reviewed the police staffing request, mm -hmm. and we took a vote, mm -hmm. I thought we voted add two FTEs. That's correct. So correct. if there's a discrepancy and a difference, would that need to be brought back to both boards to vote on a different headcount than what was previously presented? So um, approving the budget does the same thing in terms of if you approve dollars in the budget for that headcount. Um, it, it was really, um, as we as we look from the one year to the other, it was a miscalculation of what was in the what was needed to be in the budget. I guess I would. What I'm. But if if you're more comfortable with that, well, we vote with that. I guess fine. I just would not. I, I don't want there to be confusion or a mischaracterization of what we voted on and yeah. agreed to. <coughs> And I prefer clarity, crystal clear, <laughs> and it feels a little bit like mud right now. Yeah, I, 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 guess, I guess what would help me is, is under, I, I, I still don't understand, where was the SRO carried last year and the year before? It's always been in the budget. In the police budget? Yes. Okay. And we get reimbursed. Okay. So, that, so it's, the, still, that it's, it's still... The dollars wasn't the issue there. It was, yeah. it was again, going from the new chart of uh, filling shifts versus the old chart of filling shifts. And there was a, there was a, a we, we dropped one person. Mm -hmm. So what's the head count? Sarah, may I ask a question? So, go ahead, Ducky. Um, I maybe just, I'll have could, Andrew chime in too here to, to help out. Could somebody just tell me, um, please, sorry, what the what the dollar difference is. It's what was presented to us last week. It's right, I'm just what we're talking about now. So the, the net the net difference is about 125,000. 125, For salaries is 59,916. Is this between what we voted on last time and now? We as a select board and you as the VINCOM jointly? The, the dollars haven't changed. Go ahead, go ahead. Because we were told, we were given the 240 number for new officers, and then I questioned that seemed high for two officers, and it turns out it's for three officers. But that's the numbers we had last week. Is that correct? Okay. That's correct. Thank you. That's I just wanted to get that clear in my mind. It's Thank you. Just we didn't realize it was three, not two. I, I'm still lost. So, yeah, I, I, that's why it's yeah. a, uh, an addition. I, I, how, many, how many new human beings are going to be new employees? Two or three? In total, three. Really? So we're going from. Um, so it, the, the police department will have a total head count of 15 patrol officers plus the lieutenant plus the chief. And it's a total now? of 17. So, um, so this, and this is where it got confusing because we added one already this year, last week because of the one eleven uh, dispatch and one eleven F and, and filling. Okay. So that's where it got confusing because we had already added one and now we're adding two more, but from fiscal year to fiscal year, it really is adding three. Because we had the one plus the, now the two in order to get to that 15. So we had the 12. Yeah. Plus the SRO makes 13. No, the, the SRO includes is the in, SRO now, is in that 12. And 12. I, I, think so, I, I think I got it. Can I take a step? Yeah, go ahead. Mike. I think I got it. So we allocated for a new police officer prior fiscal year or current fiscal year. 2023. 
Fiscal 2023. But it yeah. but it didn't get filled. It didn't get in the budget. Oh, 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 didn't get in the budget. Because we, we didn't anticipate the problems with the reserve. So, but he was, the chief was able to um, work his salary numbers mm -hmm. with new hires and savings elsewhere. And he has enough money in this year's budget to hire that 13th person this year, though it wasn't fully loaded in the budget. Oh. So, so it's not being hired in because the it, it, year, it started though... mid, it started in uh, February, so it was you know yeah, it was like two, it was two months ago, wasn't right? It? So we're yeah, six yeah, months, we're it. seven months into the budget year. Right. It wasn't, but so it wasn't fully loaded in this current fiscal year. Right. So he looked at his total budget, saw some excess, whatever. Yes. Was able to bring full time guy on for a partial amount of the current fiscal year. Yes. So that kind of happened, unbeknownst, I guess, like. Mm -hmm. Right. No, but I'm just saying outside of the budget process. Correct. Right? Correct. So now we are okay. So that happened. Obviously that person's full time employee, they're they're staying on. Right. That was the reserve officer that became full time? Correct. Right. Okay. So it has nothing to do with SRO. No. The only right. reason why I brought up the SRO is because nothing and the SRO was confused. Uh, maybe I should have brought up because Amy and I were confused with SRO and part of the count versus not part of the count. Ah, okay, okay, laser okay. focused on that SRO. SRO. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that, that's con I can see now that that is confusing things rather than helping. So the issue is we added a new officer midway through fiscal year 2023. Correct. That didn't show up in the budget stuff we did a year ago. Correct. So now we're doing the next budget year, adding two more. But what happened? So that's a total of three from from fiscal See, I three this, budget. To I, I thought that one was more. part of the two. That, that, what happened that, with the, the, the yeah, one we that, approved like, last year for the 111F? That, that's the reserve guys have been So leave. that's the one that didn't happen until a few I months know, ago, right? I mean, no, no, because it was in the budget. That was kind of a, now that I understand, I understand it, but I still argue it's a bit disingenuous to have us approve two new officers when really. Should have been, it should have been three. Should, yeah, we should have been voting on three. And that, that was where the confusion, I mean, we're, we're responsible for that confusion. Okay. Could we have the answer to the 111F? I think there was a question here, maybe, Sarah, you made. Right. So in the 2023 budget, we voted to add a position in the police department for the 111F. Was that person ever hired? It and it was only like a half a salary because we were only paying half of the 111F salary. Well, I had that right. Yeah, two, two thirds. Okay. 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 Yeah. So okay. I thought we had added that position last year, and then I thought we were adding two this year, and that the reserve officer moving to full time was one of those two we were adding. That was my. Yeah, let me get, let me get the chief on. Okay. So, so I'm confused that I, it wasn't I just, yeah, at a very high level we voted on two of them really. Yeah, that, that, was, that was my That's your point. Yeah. Kathy, yes. right. <clears throat> and we're a small enough town we yeah. could start naming names <laughs> next year we'll go through the process. <laughs> so look, look, he'll he'll he's on standby, so as soon as he gets this, okay. he'll log in and we'll, okay. we can the one eleven F um, charges we're gonna go to a different department, right? No, they're paid out of the police department. But weren't we gonna? We talked change? about it, but we yes. did not. We decided in the end not to. Not do to do that. Okay. So that they're still in there. Uh, I'm wondering if we can't just combine the patrolman plus two patrolman line for 874, 468, which is the sum of the two, and say it's for the two, two patrolmen this year and um, the one approved last year. But I want to find out whether they hired one for last year or not. That's what I don't know. Right. But it may be that person was never hired, so that it's... Because the budget for patrolmen didn't go, it went from, it went, only went up 9,000. And in the past, it's gone up a lot more. So, you know, maybe that third person might be in why that number well, didn't go up as much. Well, they've got the 240 edition for I know, I know. So it's there the now, big, yeah. yes. So the, so the two footed number was added for the right. for the fully from the three. Say that last thing again. The two forty was added to to fully fund the three 
positions in the FY24 budget. Uh, I get that now. Correct. Yeah. But I, I don't like the fact that we voted on two and really it was three. Sounds like it was just a mix up. So it may be yeah. helpful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you want to come back to this? But I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I take your point though. It's almost like if we approve two, one of the two should be the one that came on seven months ago right. plus one more ago. Right. That would be two. Right. But then his, his schedule doesn't work. Right. right. That's right. the problem. Can we pay overtime? And this should have been communicated much more clearly. Well, and I'm confused if we voted to add one last year that it wouldn't have been budgeted. Yeah. It was. It was budgeted. partially budgeted. So let, let, let's get Todd on, okay. and then we can have the, the, the intelligent even, conversation. I think it's even more confusing than that because one of them we might have voted budgeted for the 111F, but then there was this other one that he just kind of found the extra so, dollars in his. But the one that we budgeted for is what was a replacement for 111F. So the 111F was sort of hanging out there. Right. Yeah. yeah. But but the numbers stayed at 12 active. We weren't counting the 111F in the active. Correct. So the, the, the one you added was a replacement, in essence, for the 111F on the active force. But that's so the we're one still we, at 12. That's the one you voted on, right? Last year. And that's the one you voted on last year. Yep. That one's clean. So that's, those, that's what the, that was 12, including the SRO. So to get... Um, To get to 14 plus the SRO, that's two. I just walked myself into the corner. <laughs> the only, it's, the it's, only part that's confusing. dicey or whatever is the one that's been on now for two months. Is that how long? A month. Yeah. A month. And that's I think we, we talked about that a little bit because ah. we were expecting to approve two in this budget. And he needed to that that reserve officer was leaving, and so being able to offer him a full time position now. If he didn't, the guy would have gone. He right. could keep it, but I thought it was one of the two we were right. adding, not another position. Right. I mean, I guess a little bit of shame on us for looking at two forty and not being able to say two forty should be divided by. That's 80, what I did today, which, which and I said something wrong. Gets you to three. I think we <laughs> yeah. looked at that. We looked at the 240 and yeah. said two new officers, right. 240, that's the fully loaded, okay, right. that's about right. I think that's what we did, right? Right, and I just looked at it today and said, oh, that doesn't, looks too high. Right. That was, okay. And I looked at it and thought I should be in a new career. <laughs> <laughs> because according to the notes I have, the net difference in police was 59916 excluding benefits. The net increase. No, just said. It went from 1973999 to 203-3915. Is the career incentive line, is that something that's gone up dramatically? Can we get a concession on that, maybe? Or is that something tied to something specific? So that's union contract, and, and then the third... So it is tied in. in the next, so they're, they're going to 100% of, of what's called the Quinn bill. Uh, the Quinn so bill. is that, that number that Sarah just said, I'm going to round it to 60000 if you'll let me. Yes. That 60000 increase, that's kind of all the dust settles. Reduction over time... New officers on, all kinds of moving and shaking. But it doesn't but include the health insurance. Fair order. enough. Yeah. But yeah. that's the net increase plus sixty grand for salaries. Right. For current officers, new officers. We had we had that was prior savings from dispatchers of one eighty two two oh five, the new officers plus two forty, and we had savings in reserve one oh eight. Um, Hundred eight thousand, and then we had ninety five hundred in other savings. So the net difference from the first budget to the second one was fifty nine sixty thousand. <laughs> so I think I think I think Todd is on. Are you there, Todd? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm in the car. I had to pull over. So we're we're struggling a little bit with with staffing numbers, Todd, and yeah, you know, so the we're trying to reconcile from where we are today to where we need to be. So okay. your your goal is to have. 15 patrol officers, that includes the SRO, and today That's you correct. have how many? Today we have, I'd have to look at it, but I think we have, uh, well, we have people in the academy that we uh, hired for a retirement and also the one that was approved this year, so we have two in the academy, so we would have I think 11 total. Without the SRO? Not, that's, including, that's, that's including the SRO, yes. Oh, no, that's even more confusing. <laughs> Thought, Craig, what did you think the answer was going to be? I thought the answer was going to be 12. Yeah, I thought so, with, too. With the new hire, it would be 12, and then we need the three more to get to 15. But the, so there's 11 plus 2 in the academy? Is that what I heard? No, no, no. no. That, that, that includes the, the two in academy. Unless I'm, I have to see it on my, uh, my org chart, but I'm not in my office, so maybe I, I'm missing someone. So if I put up that chart that you put up, that you made, are you able to see it on your phone? I can walk through the names. Uh, well, I, I didn't go in. I'm in through the... Uh, in through the, uh, Just the audio. I dialed in. Dial in. Yeah, okay. All right. You can go to my office. Someone in the town now, if you want to. Now, we can do a few other things and have you come in if that's possible. Good. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go to my office and, and go in. I'm just getting down on off of 128. Okay. We'll, we'll move on to other topics and come back to it. We're in room five. Okay. <laughs> All right. That will be helpful. Okay. The number is so small. We should just be using first or last one. Oh, that's, that's what I'm saying. Small enough, that's <laughs> Okay. So do we go to fire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, we go to fire. Um, you can see the new sal salaries, the new expenses, and the new salary. We added the two firefighter paramedics. We reduced um, overtime from 140 down to 30. Well, to 30? I thought it was 20. Well, that was what I explained in my memo. We added yeah. 10 back. Memo, yeah. Okay, sorry. So salaries went from 1.454 to 1.502 by 25, yeah. and then expenses we upped um, 13,000 roughly to um, cover some expense of assumed both in the salaries and in expense we assumed three calls. Um, Call volunteer firefighters. Oh. Right. Yeah, no, don't beat the PW call. This is a word. I mean, just, to reinstate. To reinstate. To reinstate. Uh, it's a stipend. Like, like, just call it out exactly. You know? So it's stipend and then the, the turnout gear. Yep, yep. And then the physical that you have to pay for. <laughs> it's a stipend based on proposed uh, DPW. Right, becoming or police, or police becoming or, or, or citizen. Or citizen. What's the status? So the fire, did, did, go ahead. The fire budget went up by sixty nine thousand. Correct. That, that's what I was just going to say. Sorry. <laughs> that's fine. So the net is sixty nine thousand higher than originally proposed. What's the stipend per? 
We were per DPW or police. No, we were projecting five thousand for the for, for the stipend. And we're adding two positions. Mm -hmm. Right. So this would this would give sixteen firefighter paramedics. So you'd have your four crews of four. Gives you the four <coughs> people on. You know, up to sixty percent of the time, depending on leave time use. Vacation, sick time, personal days. And so the, the, the remainder of the time you would drop down to three. And that's how, you, that's how you're able to significantly um, save on your overtime budget. Question. As part of planning the new overtime budget, did we figure in whether or not these two new hires would actually be, you know, paramedics who wouldn't be trained until... X number of months down the road, and therefore they're we're so, really covering stuff with overtime. Right. So the so the two extra, right. the two new, really are providing your your fourth person. So what it means is you're just going to run three more often. You're not going to hit the sixty percent with four on in the first year. Yeah. Unless it's not gonna, unless, gonna, unless you happen to hire someone with both with both licenses and, ready to go. What about coverage for Fourth of July and Memorial Day? Is that covered by the overtime, or they, they don't have enough people on shift so they don't need overtime? Right. So this, I mean, this this July is not a fireworks year. Okay. So so we don't have that expense. Fire. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm on the losing side, but I'm just going to make my point again. I just don't, see, especially in the context of now, I'm understanding we're hiring three new police officers when I thought it was two, but you know, I mean. We added a full-time firefighter prior year. We added a full-time firefighter the year before that. When I look at just dollars and cents, past five years, we've increased the fire budget at 4.8% per year over five years. Uh, you know, we've been told consistently hiring these new full-time floaters or reduce OT. That hasn't worked. These two new full-time firefighters we approved. You know, what was hired? Well, people were hired that hadn't gone through the academy. So it didn't even really help the situation, at least in the, you know, short term, right? The two in, two out. So, I, I, you know. And neither will these hires, I don't think, either. They probably will need to be trained also. I thought that was the condition. That's the question. I thought that was the condition. Yeah, I thought we said case. we would prove this so long as they were firefighters. <clears throat> I'd encourage you to not to put that constraint, yeah. because it just really... Um, there's no there, there is a benefit because you're down the road, right? But like I say, these 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 next two are sort of the gravy in terms of the fourth. So these next two are what? They allow the 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 fourth person. So if you don't have the fourth person, you just run with three. I, I'm lost. What? How does that impact hiring somebody who's already gone through the academy versus someone who hasn't? Someone who's gone through the academy can hit the ground running. They can cover staff and OT and right. Someone that understand. hasn't, they have to go to the academy and obviously physically they're at the academy for I don't know how many months, but they're obviously not helping any coverage. The, the, the goal certainly is to have that person mm -hmm. on board from day one. It's ex I just can't guarantee that we're going to find that person. Yeah. Um, but I understand no guarantees. Hold on, hold on. Sarah, Sarah, if I may. Yeah, hold on. Wait a minute, Becky. I've got Anna wants to speak. I've got John wants to speak. And I'll call you. Ann. Thank you. All right. We will have two more in, in at the beginning of this next fiscal year. We'll have two more fully qualified firefighters who will be able to bake up shifts of three. Um, I believe the chief when he says that he can hire paramedics fairly easily. Then he could get them on a schedule to go to the academy and become fully qualified. I, the reason I think that is that there are two markets for paramedics, fire departments and ambulances. There's one market for firefighters and that's firefighting. And furthermore, the paramedic school is more intense, longer, and people flunk out. So if you if you hire a paramedic, they've gone through the hard school, and you can get them into a schedule to
to become fully qualified. And probably it would take you longer to find somebody who had both qualifications than to hire a paramedic and train them. That's fine, but my issue was the fact that we hired people who only qualified for paramedics and then we used overtime to fill in the shifts because they weren't qualified to fight fires. That's that, is, that is a different question. Okay. They filled shifts that weren't budgeted, that weren't right. authorized. Okay. That is, that's a separate okay. issue. These two, um, these two hold on, Mike. On. Let, let me have other okay. people talk, okay, John? Yeah, so the chief was at our meeting on Monday, and he said <laughs> to find firefight people that are both firefighter trained and paramedic trained will take forever, like maybe the 12th of never. It's very, very hard to find those guys. So you're out the money, whether you hire a par paramedic and then send them off to school and you're losing all of that months of time, or if you wait until you can find a guy, if they're out there, that has both training. So we're in a very difficult position, according to the chief, from that, that perspective. We never had problems with other chiefs, but that's okay. Becky? Yeah. Basically, that's, I, I was going to say what they've said as well. Um, and I think that if we somehow attach, rather than saying the chief has to hire fully um, qualified and trained firemen or women that um, that we have a if we do hire a paramedic and we train that person to be a firefighter then they need to stay with us for a certain amount of time um, I, I can see doing that but I think to to stipulate they already be trained um, I think we're going to keep, prevent ourselves from being able to hire. <coughs> Thank you. Or make it greatly harder, significantly harder. Mike? So I got a couple points. So first one is these two firefighters that are going to come out of the academy in July, is that what I heard? Mm -hmm. I mean, these were the ones we approved one and two fiscal years ago, correct? Correct. So well, no, they they were... Two of them are replacing people who retired, retired or left us. One of them is last summer. The two floaters are on board. Oh, no, one isn't because he left. Correct. So one floater's fully on board. Um, I, I guess I'm just, on that point, it just seems like there's a big lag, like a very big lag between when we approved them and when they came on board and when they finished the academy and all that kind of stuff. But, okay, maybe there's a lot of in and outs. Um, you, know, you just said a floater came on and then left? Yeah. No, one of the, yeah. Right? So here's where I'm going there. My concern is, it, and I don't know how much you know, control we have over this, but it just seems like we, we should be wanting or trying to poach, for lack of a better verb, you know, a, a firefighter that you know, has 15, 20 years in some big city that doesn't want that anymore, right? Doesn't want to go charging into burning homes and, you know, they're 40 years old and kind of want a slower pace, and right? Because if we're getting the young guys in their 20s, we, we, we pick them up, we send them through the academy, they come here, they're bored, and then they leave and go to fight the fires in Lawrence and Lowell and Cambridge, you know, like, I, you know, and again, I don't know how much control we have over that, but just, well, that's what I'm talking about, hiring the right person, you know? Right, and we can certainly um, expand our recruitment efforts, for sure. And then, and then just my last point is just, you know, twice in the past two fiscal years, we've been told hiring a floater was going to reduce OT, and that didn't happen. I mean, and I know there's lots of reasons and injuries and sickness, but just, you know. Uh, Peter? It seems that Becky said something that's pretty important that I wonder if we can actually do, which is require somebody to stay for a minimum period of time after we train them. Is that... That sounds like a, a union issue. Or so, so it is partly a union issue, and you, you can sign those agreements. It's very hard to enforce them. Okay. But so, we can, so we we can, should that not, doesn't mean we can't try. Yeah. Uh, we can start, um, you know, I think that's part of, what we're, we, part of what we're dealing with here is we lose people after we train them. But I gather yeah, we but, don't, won't have a fully enforceable arrangement. If we, I mean, we haven't, we haven't lost that many. Okay. We've lost a few, but it hasn't been a... Hasn't been a steady stream of losses. Didn't we? We lost two that were unexpected. 
Okay. Todd Diggers and someone else, correct? He retired. Yeah. yeah. So Todd, Todd, yeah, the captain retired after thirty three or four years and and the other lieutenant um, he, he did want he did want a, a larger department. He wanted more but opportunity for advancement and how long have you been? Okay, hold on. Come on. We we need some decorum in this meeting. It's not back and forth. Are you through good? Okay, well, I think Maury had his hand up first. Oh, sorry, Maury. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> so it seems like we've got a problem here where we're trying to hire people. They're off. They're essentially being paid for by the town, but they're not serving the town because they're in the academy for some period of time. Granted, the state ten, pays for the academy, which no, is so nice. It's a 10-week academy. Yeah. And then they come back, and then there's some question about whether they stay. And I wonder if what we should be doing for honesty or truthfulness in budgeting it's kind of like the way we do with the snow budget, is we put in an amount that assumes when you hire, you're also paying some degree of coverage and overtime where they're not serving. And that essentially puts back to the department saying, this is your budget total for salary. And if you've got somebody in the academy and they leave halfway through or whatever, this is the amount of money you have to work with and you have to adjust your staffing accordingly. Because where we've gotten ourselves to is we're maintaining a constant level of staffing. We're running the OT up through the roof, and we're still having the same discussion this year that we've been having for the last couple of years, which is we need to hire people and move them through the academy. So I'm trying to figure out how do we do better budgeting on this. Push it back to the department head and say, this is what you have to work with. Yeah. So. And, I like and that was going to be my <laughs> so, if I may, continue on that thread. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that old saying, you know, if you keep doing things the same, the definition of insanity is mm -hmm. to keep doing things the same way and expect a different result, right? Mm -hmm. So, it would seem that there needs to be some sort of a process change here in terms of budgeting so that we make sure our plan is as accurate as possible and also gives us early warning indicators if the trend starts going negative. So it feels, I don't know, it's more of a question really than a comment, but it feels like we're doing level run rate budgeting based on headcount as opposed to saying, okay, if my budget gets approved, almost like an earned value approach, right? My budget's gonna get approved uh, for July 1 and even if I hire someone, they're really not going to start for 10 weeks. So my salary budget for the first two months of the fiscal year is going to be lower. Then it's going to bump up in the, in the third month because that's probably when I'll bring someone on board. So I'm looking, I'm asking, do we level, do we run rate budgets or do we actually try to anticipate what month? the new hire will come on board and serve the town. So it is more of an earned value approach. Um, and it gives you greater accuracy. Okay, I don't want so, to get into this in too much detail. I don't want to get into too much budget to get through when, and I it's not a staffing discussion. So, um, well, it's more so, budget. So is our overtime budget sufficient for the fire department to take those things into consideration? 30,000. Right. right. It, it is if there's not a, an injury. I can't that's the wild card in public safety. When there's an injury and someone's out and you want to have that minimum staffing, that's where the problem arises. So when, when we had a person out for six months last year, that drove overtime. And so we can put a contingency if you want to put more money in in case that happens, or you can use the reserve fund, or you can get a supplement at a, at a town meeting. Those are the, but for public safety, you typically don't have the choice of reducing staff. That's the problem. So in this, but in this, for this year, the problem is not as bad. We've, we've rerun the numbers and projected salaries. Um, so he has been able to save on his, sal his, his regular salary line because of the, the, those new hires didn't come on board until October. Um, so there are savings there for those first few months, and they come on at a lower rate. So the bottom line is his, his salary line will cover most of that OT overrun. So it's not as bad as we feared. Um, so I sat down with, with him, and I sat down with um, 
the number crunch for him, and we, we just walk through it. Let's project ahead the salaries. Let's project ahead what we think we're going to spend, and there's a significant savings there, and that'll cover most of the overtime um, that has already been spent. And is there a provision in there for somebody being injured or out for some period of time? There is not. We have not done that as part of the operating budget. Right. No, that's you don't want to you don't want to so, budget that. You want just to. So that's so that's what we come to reserve for, or do a supplement. In, in those two departments, in fire and, and, and police, uh, yeah, fire and police, that's the real challenge. If, if you want it to, to maintain, you know, for police, it's two officers on every, every shift. Um, and if and you have somebody that you can rotate through, and if, if one person is out for multiple months, um, you know, so we had, we had an officer on paid leave for a long, you know, almost a year. So, I mean, yeah. why, why would you not want to budget <clears throat> for that kind of a contingency? Well, um, we can. I mean, from, from, the, from the chief's, both chief's perspective, they would love to have that. Um, and if we don't use it, it falls back into fund balance. And they can only use it if... It, it's there. It's an it incentive to use it, right. which we don't want. Right. Right. It would be there. targeted yeah. for... Yeah. Well, Unanticipated overtime based on. You just get drawn as OT. Yeah. How do other communities deal with this? And I guess the follow on question is Is there any sort of insurance that's offered to municipalities for this? Because I'm sure if this problem's happening in little old Manchester, it's probably happening in Boston and Chicago. And how do others. Yeah, but the difference deal with in Boston this? and Chicago is. Critical mass. Right, there's yeah. little staff. So there's so hundreds much of fire. Yeah. So if one goes out for six months, yeah. it's not as, I, I would think, right? right? Yeah. It's not as big right. a deal. It's, it's not, a, yeah, we're in a small town, each person is, <laughs> is so critical to that minimal staff. So let me ask the question the other way. What happens to towns that have five employees on the police department? What do they do? Yeah, yeah, they, they go without. What was your last you, you, run, you run it. I, mean, I was just, I was just reading, uh, what town was it? Ah, I forget. But they um, they figure it out. They went without. They just reduced the coverage, so they didn't run two. And in this case, they if you only have five, you're only doing day and maybe evening shift only, and you're not covering the midnight. So they dropped their evening coverage, and they only ran days. And they called in the state troop, you know, state police to provide coverage. And that's that's what towns do. Okay, so what are we going to do with the fire budget? Well, we can talk all night on it, but we need to make a decision. Are we going to approve it? Yes, I, I was going to say that um, I think the floater approach was very inefficient, and that drove the, uh, the overtime up. Um, to, to have a call and to call a, a guy in for a minimum 12-hour shift, I, I'm encouraged that the, the four, the 16-man crew, Will will be a lot more efficient than the floater, so I'm inclined to uh, approve the 16-man crew, and uh, I think the costs are covered in what we're saving in um, dispatch, and I, I think we should let let the chief try to do with that that system. But we already use the savings in police, right? I think we have enough. Can I throw a friendly amendment onto Dean's comments? Sure. This, is, this has become a, a cycling issue for a number of years. I would recommend that the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen meet quarterly to review the progress of police and fire um, to see where we are on budgets. Because we're, we roll into budget season, which is typically January, and then we have this, oh my gosh, we've been running for seven months. Yikes, where are we? This has been a pattern, and I, I feel like if we kick off the new budget on July 1, whatever the math is, September, we ought to be meeting, December we ought to be meeting, and we ought to follow where this is going. Well, as soon as Andrews issued her quarterly report, probably. Yeah. With, with the that focus to see how we're doing. Exactly. Sure. Because this, this needs some um, oversight. Especially okay. since there's a narrative out there full of misinformation that somehow we're starving the fire department, when the reality is we've increased it 4.8% over five years. We've added two new full-time, which represents, what's two divided by 12? One-sixth, 16, 17%, right? So there's, 
This is total misinformation out there. Thank you. So do I have a motion to approve the fire department budget in the amount of one million six hundred seventy six thousand and seventy five? And that includes the two new positions. Correct. Thank you. I just want to be sure. You have that motion. <coughs> Is that the correct number, Greg? Yes. Okay. Yes, I move that. Peter moves. Do I have a second? Second. Move a second. Any more discussion? Ready to vote? Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. B? Yes. No. Mike? Tom? Yes. Moore? Yes. And Sarah votes yes. So, um, Todd is on the yes. Zoom. Um, I think if you could give Todd uh, screen sharing ability. Todd, can you put up the, um, the staffing chart with all the boxes? <laughs> You should be able to screen share now. Are you there, Todd? You're muted. Sarah, can I ask a question? You have to uh, allow me to. Yeah, I think I just, you should have that ability now. Just, it's an accuracy question. The number we just voted on, sorry, was 1.676075. Yes. Shouldn't it be 1.682325? Because if you add. 1.502525 up above. 173.550. 173. But isn't there a 6250 there for emergency management? No, that's a, we're, we're going to vote for that separately. That's a separate. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's a separate. My apologies. Yeah. Sorry. But I probably would have overlooked this, so thank you. <laughs> so, Todd, uh, could you start off and just go one through... 14, who is here now? Um, so, Shoot, Seidel, Luth, Richard, Machine, Mullins is in the academy, Co hasn't started yet, Newton's here, Cleary's here, Johnson's here, uh, Gilson he is here, and Ramos is in the academy. So that's 14, so two, openings. two openings. So that's tw so 12 altogether? 12, 12. And you see the the float cover or the floater that we call, well, we, we haven't decided if that's going to float or where it's going to be, but we just put them in as the red box, the red and the gray box on the day shift and evening shift. Those are the two new new positions. So so if you have four, you have 12 you just said 12 people higher. Yeah. Two more plus, plus the SRO. The SRO is down below. So, so that's we, we 13. That. Yeah. That's 13. Right? So we do just need two more. Correct? Correct. Correct. So why do so, you need two more? So why? <laughs> Andrew, can you help why the 240 number? Because in, for FY23, we added one to get to that total that we have right now, but that wasn't in the budget. Okay, so I was correct when I said that. Yes. So that's why we, the difference, that why we added that back, because we thought it was included, but it, so it was the, not. So and we're still, we're still adding, if you could, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe this is where the confusion is, we still have the, the person in the budget that's on 111F who will drop off in a year. Yeah, well, I'm just keeping that Correct. separate right now. That's but yeah. but these numbers he's giving us does that include the reserve officer who became full time? Yes. So that would make three new. Correct. Correct. Which was not so. Again, I think what I said earlier was correct. Mm -hmm. That we have. You added one this year that wasn't budgeted. By you took advantage of some uh, yeah, savings we, elsewhere. We about that. Yeah. <clears throat> he started late in the year, so you were able to squeeze him in. Yeah. But fiscal year to fiscal year, we're missing. We're short three, so you needed to add three. Full the full three salaries in your FY twenty four budget. That's what we talked about. 
question, Greg? If I may, just for my clarity. So I agree with everything <clears throat> you said, <clears throat> excuse me, but if we took a reserve officer and changed his badge so it's full time, that reserve salary was not in this year's budget. Uh, we've reduced reserves by 108,000. So, okay, so, it so the was, reserve money was there. That's part of how he was able to okay, do this. Right. So, but as part of FY24, we have lowered that. And so that's where the net. So, yeah, the reserve number is dropped okay. by 108,000. Okay. So basically, it's not so much we're adding <clears throat> so much as taking that gentleman's salary from the reserve. Oh, line we're adding, I'm and, sorry. Well, and moving it up to. The full time. So, it's an so additional, you're reducing reserve and you're adding. No, it's an additional full time position. It is a, an it's additional. All there is to it. No, I understand. <laughs> no, but no, I just no, wanted but, to finish my comment, if I could, that you are, it's also, you're reserve, reducing the reserve because we're getting rid of that approach. Right. So that's why I said the net. The net. The net effect um, is, is 135000 or so. Right. Understand. Okay. So the reason for adding that person right away is because we lost the dispatchers and we were at, and Greg and I had talked about it. We we were having difficulty covering the 911 dispatch. So we had to bring someone on because I had no people to cover 911 until we make the transition. It, it, it is three, but you really got to think about them separately, right? You got to think about it two and one. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how you got to think about it. Yeah. There's two truly new, right? This one, is, it's a unique situation, right? Because they're already on board, they're already employed, right, working, yeah. but they weren't in the prior budget. It's almost like a retroactive approval, kind of, sort I guess. Well, we, we, did, we did vote to approve it last year, but just... This is separate. No, this, this is separate. This is separate. This is an addition to the one from last year. This is an addition to that. All right. Yeah. So this is an addition. This was because he was afraid he was going to lose the reserve officer to go to another department, and he felt if he could offer him a full-time position, he could keep him. So I saw it as an advanced hire for the two new positions. That's how in my brain it was. I see. But I'm really, not, it's yeah. an advanced hire for three new positions. This is, this is kind of a retroactive approval. And a sort of. It's a retroactive funding. For sure. Well, the select board approved it because he had enough in his budget, and all we vote on is the budget. Yeah, but okay. yeah. right. We don't vote on staff. We're not, you know, but, we're not responsible for staffing. We're responsible yeah. for the budget. And he had sufficient money in the 2023 budget to make that change. Okay, but take that road at the end of the fiscal year. Right. Then there's not the money. So right. Well, it's sort of like it's sort of like, you know, the discussions we've had about paying for stuff, you know, out of you know using reserve money for something that's going to come back next year yeah. as like a regularly budgeted item. If you don't include it in the tax rate, to, then to, you're, you're going to get. To say it a different way, and I'm just this is total theoretical. I'm not. I'm just saying if we theoretically said no more police officers for the next budget year, he'd actually have to let one go. Right. Right. right? Yeah. Yes. I'm not. I'm, I'm just. Yeah. That's how I wrap my head around. Right, and, and in your overtime budget, we go through the. Loop. I know, I'm, <laughs> but no, 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 I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that. So no, I, yes, it adds clarity to. It does add clarity. Yes, you know I, understand, I, mean? I understand why you say that. Yes. Yeah. And if we said we're proving one new officer, then it's almost like there's nothing to do operationally, right? Operationally, because correct, he's already there. He's already there. He's already there. So, are we ready to vote on this police budget? I, I think so, now that we've gotten here. I think so, yeah. It's a total increase for those three new people of $60,000. <coughs> so do I have a motion to approve the police department salaries and expenses in the amount of $2,000,000 <coughs> So moved. Andy moves. Do I have a second? Second. Murray seconds. Could you repeat the number, please? Two million zero three three nine one five. Thank you. Any more discussion? <coughs> Take a vote. Peter. Yes. Andy. Yes. 
Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. Tom. Yes. Lori. Yes. And Sarah Lopes. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Chief. You can. Thank you. You can close that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. okay. Now we have the emergency management in the amount of <coughs> six two five zero. Which is expensive, expensive and the emergent the the red code red system. Code red, yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Do I have a motion to approve six thousand two hundred and fifty for emergency management? I'll move that. Andy moves. Do I have a second? Mike seconds. Any discussion? Take a vote. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Maury? Yes. And Sarah Lee? Yes. Here. Police, fire, um, debt. We have to do debt, right? Yep, I think it's good. I think debt and your. And then capital. And then capital. Do we do elections and registration? <coughs> yes. We did that, um, yes, last week. Elections, parking, building, and planning. And all the parks and rec and library and public health. Okay, that is on page 196. Yes. Greg, is most of this for capital? The origin of this debt go back to capital for the most yes. part. Yes. Part of the water treatment plant. There was a total of eight hundred. Oh, it's right there. Um, eight ninety five oh seven eight, and it's maturing principal long term interest in WPAT administration fee. And it matures in. Are we almost at the end of it, Greg? Um, so there's a. You can see the the list on on one ninety six. It's one ninety three. It's not a big deal, but. Look, the number sounds a little different than what we said. Is it 895? No, yeah. that's what this is saying. It's different. That was 893. Right. Yeah. Andrew, do you, there's a couple thousand dollar difference there. Yeah, I'm small right now. Okay. <laughs> it's the WPA administration fee. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it's I think it's that sewer administration fee. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, eight ninety three four seventy one is maturing principal and long term debt. Yeah. Okay. All right. My very interest. I mean. <clears throat> so yeah, it's. So we have to go for the eight ninety five zero seven. Yes. Eight. Okay. Yes. And the last bonds taken out were in two thousand eighteen. Yes. Yes. Town bonds? Correct. What was that for? Yeah. Cool. We used to always fund our capital with bonds. Um, <coughs> and do you remember what that that was for? What projects? Mm -hmm. uh, water system improvements, um, sewer improvements, mainly enterprise related items. Yeah. yeah. So most of these go to 2033, and one goes to 2036. Right. Yeah, we'll basically be debt-free by 33, assuming you didn't add new debt. One, one small one left. Okay. 
So I have a motion to approve the debt service in the amount of eight hundred ninety-five thousand and seventy-eight. Mike Lewis, Andy, seconds. Um, Peter. Yes. Andy. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. Tom. Yes. Maury. Yes. Sarah votes yes. So this, this number has dropped about a million dollars over the last eight, nine years. That's good. So, so, and that's how we've been able to pile some more money into capital for cash. Right. 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 Okay, so Do you know what it drops through the following year? Um, so it drops in the range of seventy thousand or so each year, okay. but then but then there's some bigger steps. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we, we can give you that schedule. Well, no, it's just seventy grand. Yeah, everything's checked off, isn't it? Okay. Looks like a big step in 26, fiscal 26, 27. What are you saying, Lori? I was going to say it looks like a pretty good step drop so in about 26 or 27. Yeah. But maybe I'm yes. just reading this incorrectly. Okay, capital. Now, my records regarding what we voted for is slightly different than what's on this sheet. Okay. We received today. Um, I have that we approved public safety. Yeah. And we approved carbon. Two nine. We approved parks and rec on two sixteen. Yep. And approved library on two sixteen. So I guess it's just the hardware stuff. So so first up is DPW. In the amount of One million seventy-five thousand. Yes. We don't. We don't have to vote for the chapter nine. Correct. Okay. Correct. A million seventy-five thousand. I'm wondering if, um, big picture, with uh, the five, the school increase, and the the, the excess levy capacity. I, I would like to try to be able to say in, in the, the, the budget that we hold a 2.5% increase, assuming a 3.5% school typical, and that the extra school is what we use for the excess levy capacity. And I would like to try to hold down any additional excess levy capacity expenditure, if we could, just keeping it for the school and the fields. And I think one way to do this, right now we're at 4 million, or uh, 4 point Eight. And we've always said that anything over three, the town starts to overheat. So I'm wondering, I think this is the area where we can look to try to reduce the budget and keep the um, excess levy capacity down. I, I do agree with that. Basically, you're saying slow the brake, slow the, lift your foot off the gas on the capex a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. We've always said three million is a good year. All of a sudden, we're at 4.8. Yeah. No, um, now, the other thing, Greg, is am I correct that there's an additional 400000 being spent on DPW from ARPA that's not included in this? Um, that would be the maximum. I'm not sure we're going to make that number, but yes, there, are, there is some additional ARPA money. So we're spending, really, we're spending $5.2 million if you add ARPA in. No, that's part of the, that's part of the 4.8. Oh, it is. Uh, wait a minute. Because I don't see a list. No, 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 no. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. So we're really spending five point two million on capital, if you include the ARPA. So to go Dean's way. So the the big change is is that water pipe replacement at two point two. 
That's what's that's what's the unusual number this year. From Pleasant Street. Um, is that just Pleasant Street or is there other? Uh, but yeah, it's primarily Pleasant. But we're not doing replacements because they can't get the pipe, right? <clears throat> Were they going to reline it? Yes. Um, I didn't hear the results of the testing, but that was the hope. Yes. Right. What, to Dean's point, if you had to pick something. Do we want to move from 4-8 to 3? What number what are you looking to get to? You know, I understand. I'm trying to get the three. sense of magnitude. That's yeah. all. Right. I mean, I have. Well, wait a minute. Let's go back to this, this number. She gave us. I mean, I, I guess I would start first by looking at your total, right? So, if you total what? Total. So the two, the two and a half tax increase mm -hmm. is funding everything except for the school extra. Right. So that's the, what I'm trying. The, to the only, through. the only reason why we're doing beyond right. is to fund the school correction. Okay, that that's what I would love to be able to say in the letter to the town. With the well, you can. That's where you. That's where you're at now. Even with this high number, I mean, this this number is being funded in part because of a large use of fund balance. We're using 1.7. We're using 1.7 million in fund balance to to do more capital this in this proposed year. So you're not you're not. Um, Actually, yes. So you're not taxing money. people extra yeah. hard to do this extra capital. Yeah, I, I'll take the flip side of that argument. I mean, I get that we're still within the levy capacity, but from from a you know budget from a person budgeting their household expenses, they're going to see, you know, a four percent increase. Right, and, and what's so, driving that four percent is is the school. Well. It, it's everything together. You can't just pin it all on the schools, right? It's the schools, it's the police, it's the fire, it's the DBW, it's the CapEx, it's, you know, it's it's everything together. But isn't it to the point of what Dean was saying? Isn't it, it sounds like we are in the situation of doing what he suggested. Not to say that, you know, you couldn't amend it, but the idea that Dean had was two and a half to cover everything that we're doing and then we use the excess levy capacity just to fund the incremental additional for the school. So, right. so this summary is saying we're using 457,730 of excess levy capacity. Correct. And the increase in the school budget is 909,000. Correct. And our percentage is roughly 60%? What do you mean? Of the school budget. But for the town. Well, it's it's it doesn't matter what the percentage is. The the increase to us is um, five point seven two percent, I think. Right. Yes, I think that's right. Yes, but yes. the dollar number it's not nine hundred. I thought it was yes. Like... Our increased dollar amount is nine hundred nine. Yes. Nine hundred and nine thousand eight fifty one. Round it to nine hundred and ten thousand. That's on the operating budget. It's five point seven two percent. Okay, so I think the it's dollar the dollar number I'm thinking is because we always assume a three and a half percent increase. Right. So then, if you if you take that nine hundred grand into two pieces, yeah. right, the three and a half percent increase is probably gives an additional two point two percent than normal. It's five point seven two. Right. Understood. Now I'm just breaking that into dollars. Right. That two point two percent. Said, like take the nine hundred grand in two pieces in dollars. Right. It's probably. 500 and 400, or, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, in other words, out of that 900, 500 we should have expected because every year we expect 3.5%. Correct. The 400 is the <coughs> extra punch. Okay. If you're expecting 3.5. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did. Last year we didn't have 3.5. Right. We were, we were below 3 last year. We were 2 something. I, okay, fair I'll enough. Just, I'll just I'm, I'm just no, saying, our, our, what you're saying our bogey is three and a half. I get some years right. it's below, some years it's above. Yeah. Well, the yeah. school aims for three and a half, and the way the apportionment works out is we're less. Right. And Essex tends to be more. So three and a half is the dialogue coming out of the district. What we end up with as a bill here is apportioned down typically below that, and Essex well, is apportioned. 
Yeah. For now. <laughs> it, the shoe was on the other foot a few years back, but, but yes, the, the trend certainly is in that direction for now. Well, so I get, I think I'm, my idea is slightly different than Dean's, maybe. I think, you know, I prefer to hold the two and a half, two and a half, and the flex has to be down on the capex. So, sounds like that would be 400 grand, roughly. No, but um, no, well, that's interesting. Yeah. See what I'm saying? If, you, if you're using that three and a half figure, yes. What I'm saying is, let me ask it this way. If we drop the capex by 400 grand from, I don't know, 4.8 to 4.4 or 5.2 to 4.8, I don't know, right? But if we dropped it 400 grand, would a 2.5% increase cover it, cover everything, or no? So. So right now I'm showing 1.9 in, in taxation, funding the capital. So in order to achieve what you want to do, you have to cut that 1.9 to 1.5. But then we're not using any of the excess levy capacity to pay for the school. Correct. Well, yeah, we're not using. Sense to me. Well, That's, we're not using any excess levy capacity. Is what I'm suggesting. Right, you want to keep it at two and a half. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the issue is is that then we're essentially using reserves to cover an operating expense that's going to hit us next year. Look, no, not really. No. Yeah. No, because I mean, I'm like we just we had this if discussion. I reduce this my capital expenses okay. by by four hundred thousand, and I'm taking it from taxation. Okay. But my my concern is now. Instead of, I've been trying to grow the amount of general taxation in the capital a little bit every year. It's as steady as it goes. It's been an incremental process. We started, when I, was, when I first came here, I we remember. had very little taxation going in the capital. I, one of the things that we've been able to accomplish is to grow that capital where it needs to be. Um, so to me, it feels like a step backwards to now... We're talking about 400 grand in the context of 5 million bucks. I mean, that's, you know. Well, but so, so instead of next year being at 2.1, I'm going to be at 1.7. So why don't we What's take the, the design? Sorry, because I'm trying to grow at 200,000 every year. Why don't we take the design of the DPW facility out of the CapEx budget? We don't even have a facilities report. We don't know where it's going to be. That can wait a year. I, I, I would, What's the dollars? 350. Or we could reduce it to get something I started. Would take it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's almost the number. Yeah, I understand. I understand. And to Dean's point, I mean, you know, I've been on this committee for a while, and it's always been three million bucks. You know, three million has been kind of that's the good number because if you spend more than that, you actually upset the town because you're doing too many roads or too many pipes at once. And I take your point. There's inflation and blah blah, but three million to five million, that's, you know, what's that? Forty percent more? I mean, that's, you know, that's not like three to three and a half. Or we three were three to three and a half last year. <clears throat> okay, but three to five two or four right. eight, that's you know. five two without a subject. I mean that's still money. It's not taxable. I mean high level we're still making a good dent in infrastructure. Yes. And to be honest, if we use what is it, three fifty, you know, so that doesn't impact the work on pipes and yeah. roads and you know. That 350 for the DPW facility, is that design fee? What is yeah, that? design fee. Yeah. Okay. So that presumes going forward with a particular location. So the hope was that we would make that decision in the fall and that, that we could get started on design. Yeah. That was the, that was so the projection. Question. So then um, would the push out maybe be six months, not a whole year because you know, your next fiscal year would start the following July, right? So he could still get the facilities master plan underway. Yes, that's and underway now. If, if we weren't going to start the design until later on in the fiscal year anyway, you're really only pushing it out Correct. four or five months, not Correct. a whole year. That, that's true. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think that you got to get your facilities plan, and then you got to make determination as to... <coughs> the me. order in which you're going to do things and, yeah. and where stuff is going to be located. And I don't think we're close yeah. to that. I mean, they are looking at the old compost site, but nobody has looked at everything to say, yeah, that's where DPW should go. To the best of my knowledge. 
as long as we don't make any cuts that interfere with creating that facilities master plan, that would be my my that's personal what thing. For. Right. So that's and that plan relies upon this design work. No, 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 no. no it doesn't. <coughs> it does. This I design work sure. follows that. Okay, it's a study that's already appropriated. Yeah. Sorry, it's a study that's already happening. Right? Yeah, I just wanted to build on what you were saying to be sure. Are there other elements in the in the lineup for capital that are candidates for deferral? As as cleanly as I sense this one is, that is the DPW design. I mean, if we don't keep the pipes going and the roads going, I'm, I'd be resistant to that because I live on a road that keeps having water turned off. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know if there are other things on there that. I mean, I think so, we need to do the roof at the Chatter House and, you know, all these other things. I mean, so just one general comment and is, is I think if you look at what the taxpayers are going to be seeing over the next five to six, seven years, Essex Elementary is going to be rumbling along at some point. And if Essex Elementary rumbles along before DPW happens, it's a pretty tough pitch to say we want to do a school and a DPW facility. I. I don't know. My mind just foggily says, what if we got the DPW thing done earlier rather than later? I just don't think we're but in a position to, we haven't made any decisions yet. I, I don't see how we're in a position to fund something we don't even know what Yeah, I'm just saying I would, I would just be cautious about delaying the town's interest in a DPW thing. I, I, don't, I don't disagree. I, I don't disagree. But I, I'm I not saying I, we put the I, money there and we lose it, or we, it yeah. rolls downhill. But just I think e even though the school district is is putting in a you know a statement of interest for <coughs> for state funding, uh, I'm not sure they're going to get the same thing that happened to Memorial. You know, it's, it's in better shape than Memorial was. I mean, we, can't, we can't say yes to everything, right? Like we're allocating limited yeah. funds, and this is three hundred fifty grand just for plans, just for design, like design <laughs> on, on something that, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. If someone had, if someone asked me to explain the difference why taxes went up four percent versus two and a half, and I said, oh, it's because we spent three hundred fifty grand on a design for like. I, I mean, my my problem is, I think if we're doing a facility study, we need to be able to see the study. And then prioritize the projects, and I don't think we prioritize is just DPWs raising their hand and saying we want to be first. When does this report do? So summer. At the end of the summer. So you could have a fall town meeting, and if you really want to move it along, have a special. But the fact that we can't fit all of the fire equipment in the fire station with that Linfield engine leads me to believe right. we're going to be looking for a new fire station. Uh, how dependent is the design on the location? Um, well, to get to a, a full design, absolutely, you need the location. I mean, we've done, we, they've done the, a, a, a very preliminary design with numbers, and, and they can fit on either side, so we know the you know, current side or, or the couple of sides. Mm -hmm. um, so the next phase is you you want to know where you want to know what what and parcel so it's going some, to sit on. There's some preliminary design done. Yes. And and okay, so I'm I'm lining up with Kathy. We get the facilities plan and, and right. take this up right. if we want to go ahead. We can we can do a, another we can talk about it. Oh, hold on just a moment. Nate DeRoche is raising his hand. Nate. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so we have completed a siting analysis for the DPW facility, basically looking at rebuilding on the existing site or moving it to, as discussed, the compost. Um, you know, those locations were basically chosen based off of the previous uh, study that was never really finalized. That was done in like 2016, 17, I believe it was, um, that really kind of looked at some of the, you know, facility needs town-wide and the available uh, land options that we had. Uh, so that's how we kind of got to that point with looking at the two specific sites. Um, and as Greg mentioned, we are underway on the facilities master plan where we're going to look kind of wholesale at 
you know, all the various sites in town, what are the existing facility needs? Um, like you said, you know, fire department, you know, obviously has, has issues, PD has issues. So it's, you know, it's a bigger kind of holistic look at it. Um, you know, with that said, I think our plan and was to have that wrapped up by the end of the summer. And then we could roll into a, you know, a design for a DPW facility, you know, starting in the fall, um, and that was, you know, projecting how long that design would take, uh, you know, rolls into kind of basically a two-year cycle after that for construction. Thank you, Nate. Um, I, I really strongly agree with Sarah. Um, spending large amounts of money without a strategy and a prioritized list of things you want to do is really unwise. And if we're really just talking about a few months delay in the design of the DPW facility, I, I think that's prudent because while we think right now that may be the next thing we have to do when we when they finish that master plan and we talk through the strategy and what our priorities are, it we might find that another facility is actually more important for some other reason. We don't know until we get that plan. So I, I really like Sarah's suggestion. I think it's very prudent. Can I make a motion? Go ahead, Mike. <clears throat> Can we take out the three hundred fifty thousand design fee for the DPW? I'll second that. Oh, Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Laura? Yep. Sarah Wilson. So we're taking out the three fifty. Brings DPW down to 725 plus the 400 in office hours. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Okay, do we want to, do we want to take a vote on the capital for the Department of Public Works in the amount of, I mean, do we want a motion for 725,000? So moved. So I have a second. Mike seconds. <clears throat> Bo, Peter. Yes. Andy. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. Tom. Yes. Lori. Yes. Sarah votes yes. Um, next is land use management. 37,500 to match an, a grant to do a Downtown strategic plan. So what's the purpose of this plan? So this is a combination with um, the whole MBTA zoning, 3A. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. Yep. So this um, this would fund this would provide funding for analysis. Um, and, and is this a parking focus? What's yeah. the focus of this analysis? The folks that ask is what sort of um, what growth do we want to have take place in, in the village core, and and help us to understand if we want to comply with with the new three A zoning or not. I see. That's what the thing. And where is the grant coming from? Is it the state department that's pushing this housing? So there's a number of different um, sources. Um, uh, MAPC has some technical assistance grants that they have. Um, Housing Choice Program has funding. Um, the um, Mass Housing Partnership offers assistance and grants. So there's three or four different funding possibilities for, for grants. I'm a little leery about using those state agencies for a grant because of what we experienced in the 40 day. That a consultant we hired could only help us if we were going to say yes. The moment we started to say no, maybe we're going to deny it or file for a safe harbor, he couldn't be involved. And I just <clears throat> am concerned about these other agencies being the same. And 
We're only going to really help you if you're going to say yes. But we're not there yet. So maybe I'm wrong. I think so. Um, uh, my understanding is that some of the grants allow us to choose the consultant. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not the state staff or the or the MAPC staff if you're concerned about that. Um, so I think we have the ability to, to pick and choose. That's what we had with the 40 Um Well, but those are pre pre selected. Pre -selected yes. <laughs> so you got to choose from a, a limited set of options. Who, who picks the who picks the consultant? It'll be the, the task force, the planning board. Planning board. I mean, so we're, we're voting on this, even though the funding for it really is going to be 100% of grant? No, 50% grant. It's, it's an assumption that it's, uh, a lot of the grants require a match. It, it may not be as much as this, but uh, sometimes the 20% matches, it just depends. And, and, I mean, high level, this is something we have to do or, or no? Yeah, exactly. Can we wait? I mean, when you get the grant, can't this come back? I mean, something, I'm, I'm missing something here. Is something going to happen when we put a thought? This is uh, anticipation. It's, it's anticipation. anticipation. Okay. Um, the, the task force has been, uh, has been created. Um, but the grant hasn't been decided. We, we haven't been awarded a grant. We've, yeah. we've sent in some letters of interest and we're, Got we're it. in that process. The, the determination regarding the 3A. <clears throat> needs to be completed by December of 2024. I see. So there's the push. Correct. There's the push. Yes. December of 2024. And to be compliant. Halfway through, <coughs> I mean, that would be the next fiscal, but you have to make do all your zoning changes. If you're going to do any by that December. So you need a little lead time based on how quickly our zoning changes. And with the grant if, time if to enable that, that kind of compliance? Yes. It would. You don't have it. No. Does the, the, I mean, you understand this much better than me, but if you don't, they just you risk money. Money, but we don't get much money. Well, except um, South Zealand is applying. For his, historically, we haven't received a, a ton of money. Um, recently, we we've, we've done better, and uh, the board uh, approved submitting a letter of interest for a MassWorks grant, which could be a, a couple three million, um, and the housing authority. Um, has not been successful recently in getting capital improvements. They desperately need them, uh, and they would be shut off. What, sorry, what's the? I heard three million, and my ears perked up. <laughs> <laughs> what's three million? For um, utilities <laughs> to service the LCD, the limited commercial district. Okay. I mean, that's about the only number I've heard that gets my ears tingling, because the other numbers are like <laughs> twenty grand, forty grand, two hundred grand. I they're, understand. They're nothing. That one's obviously. I think we should go forward on this. Do you, do you, do you okay. want to yeah, vote on this independent of everything else? You yeah. want to go down the I list? I want to go each section separately, so let's take a vote on this. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve 37500 for land use management? You do. Do I have a second? Second. Andy seconds. Take a vote. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? No. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Maury? Yes. Zero votes, yes. Um, Um, okay, um, town hall, mm -hmm. 88,000, is that correct or? No, it's 56. Isn't it 58? No, it's 96, but CPC oh, is paying oh, sorry, eight. Sorry, got it. Got so it. we vote on 88. Got it. Um, four. Yep. Computer upgrade, C side one, HVAC, and water task force. What was the water task force? Tell us what, what are 30,000 is for for the task force. So the, um, so the, the water task force, water resources task force was created um, mm -hmm. about a year ago. Yeah. Um, uh, they've been working on analyzing our water resources, how to better protect them. Uh, projection for future, looking at our, our, our uh, rates, our tiered rates, um, how better to conserve water uh, supplies. So they, the, these dollars are aimed specifically at um, um, putting together a new uh, rate structure 
and um, educating people for water conservation efforts. That's the primary purpose of, of these dollars. Um, do I have a motion to approve 88,000 for town hall capital items? So moved. Andy moves. Do I have a second? Second. John seconds? Um, vote. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. <coughs> Morris? Yes. Zero vote, yes. Next is Historic District Commission. $15,000. So these are funds to conduct uh, basically an inventory of historic buildings uh, in preparation for potentially um, putting some of those structures on the uh, historic preservation uh, list and enables uh, property owners then to qualify for various uh, either tax credits or uh, other, other opportunities to help with their preservation. I'll say this one's a little near and dear to me because I owned a house that dated back to 1684. I sold it. It had five chimneys and ten fireplaces and four beehive ovens and the new owners took down one of the fireplaces mm. with the two most beautiful beehive ovens in. So. So can I just ask a question? I am not taking a contrary <laughs> position. <laughs> I recall several years ago when um, a tree branch or we had water damage in the children's room of the library and we couldn't work or fix that because it was in a historic area and so we ended up waiting and waiting and waiting and spending a fair amount of money and so I believe in historic preservation but from a point of view of like capital and operational efficiency are we creating more hurdles to get things done. For I think this was for residents, is not. Is it just residents? for residents? This is for residents. Okay. It, it, it would be so voluntary. it benefits taxpayers and uh, doesn't <coughs> hinder the town. Taxpayers right. would have to apply for it, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So it would be their their choice whether or not to actually go forward with, Perfect. with the uh, registration. Do I have a motion to approve 15000 in capital for historic district commission? So moved. Andy moves to have a second. second. Dean second. Vote. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Morris? Yes. And Sarah Lucas. Yes. Town Clerk. Voting tabulators and booths, $10,000. It's replacing. It's upgrading. It's yeah. not clickers, right? No. It's, <laughs> no. it's the machines you put your ballot in for them to count. I think. Okay. It, right. It's the both. It's the actual booths themselves and the tabulators that count the ballots. Okay. <laughs> Do I have a motion um, to approve ten thousand dollars in capital for the town clerk? Yes. You do. Peter moves. Do I have a second? Second. Maury seconds. Vote. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Maury? Yes. Sarah says yes. Library, we already approved. Council on Aging. Van replacement. 25000 as a match for a grant. Do we have the grant? Um, if we don't have it in hand, it's very close. Very it's, close. It's, it's, it's certainly been applied for. Uh, we have received it in the past. Mm. Um, okay. So we're, we're, we're <clears throat> pretty confident that it's coming through. So this is the, re this is a cycle of replacing. And what would the grant now be? I, I, would that change the number here? If we grant came through, I don't know, for a certain amount, would that change the twenty-five thousand requested? So it, the grant requires, I think, it's a twenty percent match. So this, is, this is the twenty percent match. And you've done the mathematics, and yes. it comes yeah. yeah. The 25 grand is 20 percent. I believe so. Yes. How many vans? One. The the, the, the mini buses. It holds what? 12 or 15 people? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what? If, am I doing that right? Multiply by five. Sixty thousand. Or is that 20 percent, right? Yeah. So each one is is sixty five thousand or so. Each van. So this is more than 20 percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
25 grand would be 25 grand is 20 percent of 125. Right, two vans. Oh, two. I didn't. Two that, I didn't hear that. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> we have three. I know. Two we have three, but two, two. So sixty grand a pop, one hundred and twenty. There you go. Got it. And how many yep. years do the vans last? Yeah, they look pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> I'm parked next to one of them. <laughs> They're taking up all the parking spaces. <laughs> They're like five year life. Yeah. Huh. Do we do we trade in the old ones? Yeah, I can trade them. Yeah. So we we get something back there. Yes. <laughs> if we trade them that often, are we better leasing them? <laughs> Five year life, that's not long. <laughs> Leasing companies. I think we, it's, we buy it's, new? I think it's longer than five because I we haven't so replaced too. anything since COVID. Correct. These are That's three years. Right. You know. I thought it was a couple a year or two before COVID that they came. Uh, yeah. I, I, can, I can get you more information. Do we buy them new or do we buy? We have bought them new. Yeah. Can I put the mileage on them? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they. Miles add up. Uh, uh, more different. than twenty thousand a year. They go on every day. More than twenty thousand miles per year. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're 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 sometimes six days a week. So. Okay. You no, know, they they take trips into Boston. And okay. It's, it's just not just. Running you know, I, that's what I pictured yeah, here. Yeah, no, they're, they're running the different places. They're doing field trips there. And there's a need this year to replace two, as opposed to like doing one a year or so. I, th I think the the grant fu the funders like to see a, a package deal. Yeah. And I think uh, yeah, I think we're in line for electric ones. Oh, that would be really good. So. Um, they're giving us eighty percent. Yeah. Okay. That's hard to. Do I have a motion to approve um, twenty five thousand to match on a grant for replacing two council energy vans? I'll make a motion. Mike moves. Do I have a second? I'll second. Maybe second. Okay. Well, Peter. Yes. Andy. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. Tom. Yes. Ward. Yes. Sarah says yes. Parks and Rec, we did. Um, Harbor, we did. Well, let's do water and sewer and then go back up to public safety. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah, I have notes that you guys would have gone to public safety capital on February 9th. I thought we had, but yeah, I thought we had too. Yes. You're right, we did. Yeah. But there's no fire apparatus in it, so we'll circle back around on that. Um, you're right. Water department. To the tune of... Two million, seventy-five thousand plus four hundred million in ARPA funds. I would say up to 400. <laughs> up to 400. Yeah, 400,000. It may not be the full 400. But you're not you're not voting on that. Right. So 2 million, this is water pipes, sewer. Most, mostly water pipes. Water pipes and then just water. a little bit of plant upgrades. Correct. 200,000 is plant upgrades. 1.9 million. And that's one project, the Pleasant Street project? <clears throat> yeah. What was the, so was, there was, was a desire the, desire to get that done prior to <coughs> the, the Central Street Bridge project. Right, because of traffic. Because there's going to be a lot more traffic on Pleasant Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be inclined to want to resurface the road after the detour. <laughs> you know. No, but if you lived on, that, on, on it, you're going to want it done beforehand so that you're not hearing banging trucks all day long. <laughs> so um, it, it did Last time we talked about this, there was going to be an assessment of the piping. Yes. It, was that it, done? It was done, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have that. I don't, is Nate still with us? Yes, he is. Nate? 
Yeah, unfortunately, they haven't gotten us the results of that scoping yet. It was not as uh, okay. resultive as they uh, claimed it to be. Uh, so basically, we tried to go in through the hydrants so we wouldn't have to do an open cut and expose and do a shutdown on that water main. Uh, but that because that's a 16 inch water main that really serves the mo rest of the town. Um, so that's really why it's kind of the cost is quite high on that one because it is a 16 inch main. Uh, and we're doing the same process that we did on School Street with the lining, cleaning it and then cement lining it. So we're, we're feeling like we know enough that lining is the solution. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Based on the work we've done on that pipe in, in previous years to other breaks, you know, it is pretty sound material being, you know, the older cast iron, you know, is generally pretty thick and we find it to be in good shape. It's just the tuberculation inside that, you know, yeah. you know pretty much just clogs the arteries, right. so to speak. So now, Andy, say that in layman's term. <laughs> so the, 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 the piping is in good enough shape to yeah. scrub it out and then, versus and, and then right. line it. Versus it's replaced. not original piping. I know it was replaced at one point, like 80s or 90s. So at some good, point it was replaced. A good cleaning yeah. is good enough. We don't need to fully replace it. Cleaning and then lining, yeah, which is what they did on the school street. Line, right? <clears throat> and this is for which street? Which street? Pleasant. 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 And half mile street, half mile long Is that street. like a cost savings of 50% or more versus replacing? Uh, it's a good question. I don't, I'm not, I, it's definitely, there's a substantial it, savings I'm imagining, Nate, for lining versus replacement. Um, it's definitely a savings. Uh, I can't remember the, off the top of my head what we had for an estimate on a replacement, um, but with the kind of availability of duct iron pipe, it being in, uh, good condition and, you know, being able to have that option to line it, yeah, I think it makes the most sense to do that instead of doing a replacement project. Yeah. Was the school street budget similar or? Uh, that was only about 1.2, uh, I believe, uh, but it's a smaller diameter pipe. Right. Uh, so it, the, the cost does tend to kind of go up as you uh, increase in size, uh, it's just, you know, more cleaning, more lining. It's just a little bit harder to get it all done, um, you know, the diameter as the pipe, of the pipe gets bigger. The diameter of the pipe impacts the cost more than the actual, like, mm -hmm. the length? That's, that's it's not a one-for-one one thing, I don't think, but it's... it's Correct, yeah. yeah. Um, what is the life of a lined pipe? And... And if we have to go back in 10 years and do it again, is it, can you just reline it on top of a lining or? No, you would, you would it, line it, replace it. I mean, that, yeah, it's a, it's a 50 year life uh, on, a, on a cement line pipe and the cement lining doesn't allow the minerals to stick to it going forward. So that's the big advantage that our hydrant flushing will take care of any of the, you know, minerals that do you know, precipitate out. So in general, we'll have a much cleaner pipe going forward and we won't have the restrictions that we see in the pipes, uh, you know, that we pull out of the ground today. So it improves, <coughs> you know, the flow, it improves the pressure, it improves the water quality, um, you know, and all those down, you know, for that specific pipe and then downstream as well. Okay. Great, thanks. Um, now what's this, Additional 475 funding, where is that coming from? That's from the sewer, uh, for the water, water enterprise? enterprise fund. Okay. Yes. So we need to approve the 207. The 207. Okay. Yeah. Do I have a motion to approve 2075000 um, for the water department for pipe and plant? So moved. Second. So moved. Andy seconds. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Lord? <clears throat> yes. And Sarah says yes. This is just a high level question, probably to Nate, I guess, but like, just where are we time wise on all of these capital? Are we. The piping? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I know we're never on time, like, no construction project is on time, right? But like, are we relatively on time? Or because you got supply chain issues, and then I know you got all these different moving pieces. I'm just. So just talking overall yeah, just, projects? Yeah. 
In other words, do we have some on the we, table for in the 2023 budget, and where do we stand on those? Right, like have we approved stuff a year ago, and we haven't even, you know, Done. put a shovel in the ground or something. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we completed the, the school street project was the, the last you know one, so we got that done in time. Um, and so we'd be the plan would be to go out to bid with the Pleasant Street uh, project if it's approved um, for construction this summer into fall. So that's done ahead of uh, you know the Central Street culvert project, as Greg mentioned. Um, you know, in general, you know, we're moving, you know. Kind of all of our projects, you know, between you know just DPW, um, Parks and Rec, Harbor, you know, everything's moving forward in some stages. Uh, you know, most of it's in design. Um, permitting is a very big issue right now um, that is just taking extremely long once it gets to the state level, and you're waiting on those. Um, so that seems to be the biggest delay right now in a lot of our projects. For permitting for what is it like like Pleasant Street? Is that a big permitting issue? I wouldn't think. I don't know. No, no. So for like the water main, that's not. I mean, that should be a pretty easy design to put together and get it out on the street. You know, we basically already have the you know what we did for School Street, so that will get out onto the street. You know, this spring bid construction this summer. Um, but like the other projects that involve like the harbor, you know, where we need Chapter ninety one licenses or um, even the Central Street Culver project, you know, we're working on year four of, of permitting. Um, so any projects that we're having to go to like the state level to get permits um, is, is tending to be very slow right now. Year four permitting for the Central Street Culver. Wow. Yep. Yep. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh. So even if we had all the money in hand, we still, we still can't. We're, we're, we're probably a year away from this fall. Just from a permitting perspective. Just getting everything, yes. Well, gravel for the sewer department, 300000 for plant upgrades. It's all being paid out of the sewer enterprise <clears throat> fund. Do I have a motion to approve 300000 for the sewer plant so upgrades? Moved. So moved. Uh, Maury moves, do I have a second? Second. Andy seconds. Um, <coughs> take a vote. Peter? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Maury? Yes. Harrison? Yes. I believe that's it. Now, there's no fire apparatus in this capital budget. Correct. So, um, I think we would benefit from a, a, a little bit more time on uh, options for the latter, um, uh, including getting a waiver on the emissions issue. Um, so that's being pursued. Um, and hearing back from the uh, motor manufacturer in terms of uh, what, what would they recommend um, to come to compliance. Um, there's been uh, some very preliminary discussions potential of sharing a ladder with the neighboring community. Uh, I think that's worth pursuing further as well. Um, so the budget includes an additional contribution to the to the apparatus fund um, with the monies coming back uh, that was allocated for the ambulance. Um, since we're not going forward with that, there'll be about 1.3 million in the fund. Um, so if we have a solution uh, that that uh, we need to act on, uh, we could do that uh, at the fall town meeting. Now, what about the pumper truck? Because that's also like 20 years old. Pumper truck is no, it's 12 or 13 okay. years okay. old. Okay, okay. So it, it it should go for another eight years or so. Okay. Um, it it uh, since you brought it up, <laughs> it it does. Uh, we need a significant amount of uh, repairs to the pump. Um, total cost is probably twenty-five thousand dollars. Was that was that was that, was that, was call? Was that freezing damage? What was the yes? The, so the, that's the that's water, water fire. Correct. That that was, to, it then sat for a while. Really so cold. they 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 you know they pumped off they pumped it, um, and, and all the water was put onto the fire, yeah, yeah. and there wasn't a, a new water source to keep feeding water through the pump. Uh, 
So the residual waters froze damaged the and damaged the pond. Did, did other fire departments experience the same thing? I don't, I don't know, for sure. Um, um, and who pays for that? We do. We do. So, yeah. It's, 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 and that's kind of mutual aid. So each, each, yeah, individual aid, you cover your own equipment. So if someone, if Essex had come to us and they, their pump yeah. damage, yeah. they would have yeah. been their dime. I, I, I would be really so we curious. will be looking at a potential, we're going to inquire whether or not insurance will pick up any of this. Yeah. Um, I'd be really curious. I, I understood there's five departments roughly, I think, that went through that fire. And I'd just be curious if other departments had similar problems right. with their vehicles. If they did, then hey, that's Mother Nature, that's weather. But if not, now I'm curious. Can I ask a question about the fire fund, just the mechanics of it? So each year we put money into it. Yeah. Is this essentially an accounting thing, or is the money actually sitting in an account somewhere? Well, it's, what? It, yeah, there are dollars sitting in yeah. the, I mean, it's all. And we're, we're getting the interest. It's a separate bank account. <clears throat> it's not, paper. It's not, it's not paper. paper. I mean, it's not, a, it's not literally a separate bank right. account. Right, so it's an account. It's on paper. Yeah. And... Um, if, but it is cash. Yeah, yeah. So it, I know it's added to every single year. If we decided next year we, town, wanted to pull money out of that fund and put it into a police vehicle fund or a DPW fund, could we do that? Or because it's already allocated in that, does that become hard to pull that back? Or reallocate it, I should say. I believe that voters could reality okay. take a vote. It's not a stabilization fund, so right. it wouldn't be I was going to say so. vote. Yeah. But it does take another vote to actually spend the fund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious about what what options are available. It sounds much more flexible than like money stabilization. stabilization. Right. Yeah. 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 Which has to go to the voters and the ballot. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, are we ready to move on to, so I think we've covered everything in the budget, is that correct? Is that correct, Andrea? I still have um, OPEB and yeah. the um, officer and command yeah, back. That's thing. in warrant articles. Correct, yes. Right. As far as the operating and capital, um, that is, I have everything we voted on. Okay, so, oh. So the open is always a separate warrant article from the budget. So the amount in this year's warrant article is $289,300. <coughs> and how much more is that than last year? Just, uh, three, three to four percent increase. Okay. Is there a page on this, sir? No, it was in the stuff. I know it's the spreadsheet sent out today. Yeah, I've got that. I was just I curious what it was over the last year or so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have it's exactly four percent increase from 4%. last year. Is it okay? okay. <clears throat> so do I have a motion to approve the OPEP contribution, the amount of two hundred eighty-nine thousand three hundred? Peter moves. Do I have a second? Only second. Any discussion? A quick question for Greg. Like, this is this is that thing that we're like. I know it's good shape, but like we're like super good shape, right? Like, yeah. Like, right. So we're we're um, on track to fully fund our retiree health costs mm -hmm. um, by early thirties, thirty thirty-two. Yeah, I'm just remembering this discussion. I can't remember the. the individual's name, you know, when we go through our annual audit and Dan yeah. Sherman. Thank you. Dan yeah. Sherman. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's right. And you know, he compares where we are with other towns and it's like we're not even yeah. in the same ballpark. Right. In a good way. Correct. Most right? most communities have not been putting away this kind of money right. for their liability. Andrea, do we have the value of the, of that fund as of June thirtieth of twenty twenty two? I do. Oh, good. Okay, I need it for the report. That's why I was asking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can send that to me. I'd appreciate it. 
I, I don't know. I just, it's something we should just consider that, you know, <laughs> we don't need to be this aggressive on this, you know? I mean, Except we were timing it for trying to get this paid off before we had big increases in capital budgets. Like a school. <laughs> yeah, again, just, you know, limited resources for increase in this department, that department, we, we're spending a lot on capex. You know. We had an enormous amount of pushback from citizens in the community to get us going on this. Fair enough, but, you know, we've hit sixth gear. I mean, yeah. Would it make sense not to increase it in a year that we're not expecting such returns in the stock market? I mean, because it's not, we're just going to, it's not going to be as efficient, so. Well, it still is, you so, don't so buy your investments so, to. Some would argue this is a good time to invest. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, you. Yeah. So, it's the prayer. I mean, it's kind of yeah. complicated because but at the level we're contributing, I think we get like a seven and a quarter percent ROI or a seven and a half percent, and it's it's completely actuarial. So it's, <laughs> that's a whole another thing. And if you look at the state and um, Deborah Goldberg and limitations she's putting on all this stuff about what they invest in or don't, it's frankly really surprising they can't even get close to seven and a half percent. But we're in a fund that's been returning much more than that. Yeah, nice. so it's yeah. it's been we're working quickly toward getting it off the books and getting it behind us. Um, yeah. I don't know, my my recommendation is steady as she goes and let's get this done behind us. But and I mean, we, should we, we need be to take a breather now and then. Like it, that's not tragic, you know. But that's why we're in the position we're in is because we took a breather for so many years. That's what the whole state is in. Yeah. <laughs> right, but if I if I remember Dan's comments, like, you know, there's some towns that are in such poor shape on this that like he's right. even envisioning that, you know, the model's gonna have to be reworked because some of these right. other towns are just they, they're just not gonna get there. Right. You know? So then I just wonder if it's like no good deed goes unpunished, right? So we're being aggressive, we're putting all in, you know, we're we're hitting all our numbers, and then someone goes, guess what? Eighty percent of the other towns they're never going to, you know, get there, and we have to rejiggle the whole puzzle. I don't know. Maury, what should we be thinking of the likely time of the Essex Elementary? Is that early 30s? Because I thought like there was some early. impression we had that it was moving It was moving yeah. sooner. Oh, yeah. my. Yeah, that's their hope. That's their hope. They're applying this year. Yeah, I mean, it's... Okay, because that's why I know this issue of trying to make yeah, I mean, more, get things paid off so we have more capacity for... So it really sort of depends on when MSBA potentially approves the project. And then that really starts the clock moving in a pretty quick direction. Okay. So if, if the district gets approved in this round or the next round or whatever, it sort of sets the start date for all this. Um, Which could be well sooner than thir 32, I think, was what I've been told. Yeah, okay. correct. Potentially. Yep. But, I mean, a 4% increase, are we planning to keep increasing it until it's paid off? I mean, what, what, I'm not saying we've we don't running, support it. We've been that's running we, at that. That's what we've been doing. We've just been keep increasing it by 4%. So, so, the, yeah, so, so Dan, the, the chairman, the, the auditor who's been advising us, he, when we first set it up, he said, if you get on the schedule, yeah. um, you'll be in good shape. And this next report, we could take a hit because the investments would be down. Well, so the definitely. contribution will go up. Um, I just remember Dan commenting, I think he's in <coughs> Wakefield, and I think he's on the finance committee in his town of Wakefield. And he was saying how far different we are from Wakefield. And well, there are lots of towns who have zero money in, a, in an OPEM trust account. Many, many towns have not touched this yet. Right, so I don't know. <laughs> so I have, do I have a motion in a second? You do. Should we take a vote? Peter. Yes. Andy. Yeah. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. Yes. Tom. Yes. Laura. I just, the next time Dan's in, I, I really think we should get into that. And, you know, because like you said, if there's all these towns that are at zero, I mean, and we're at 80%, you know, I, I don't know where it is, but I know we're somewhere. That, like, to me, there's going to be some big change. There's going to, right? Like, I mean, the, one of the benefits of doing this too, Mike, is 
because we have this fund um, in a really bad year, we could pay the current year's health insurance out of the trust fund. Eventually, that's what we will do yeah. going forward. And, and you could do it, as Sarah indicated, you could, if the sky was falling, yeah. you could tap it. So this fund is definitely ours. Yes. No, yes. No. There's no way the state can. No, no, no. I mean, never say never. <laughs> no, it's, no, they, they, they would, this is our money. How much money is it? Over three million. It was oh, it was over three million on June thirtieth of twenty twenty one. I don't have updated numbers. So it's another two hundred eighty beyond that. Yeah. Before everything. But it, it, it's an account at the state, like. No, it's a private. It's it's in a state uh, state run fund. Privately managed. It's not like in a Fidelity account or a Schwab. Or is. It's a privately managed. It's, it's in print. Um, yeah. Co-mingled yeah. fund. Yeah. The Pension right. Reserve Investment Trust. Thank you. We have a custodial arrangement with them so that they hold our OCA trust funds with all the other towns and communities that have signed up with them. But if theoretically, like just theoretically, like you said, tomorrow we want to take money out to pay. Health insurance. Pay health insurance. Yeah. We could do it. Yeah. Right. That's, that's your decision. Um. Another warrant article that says officer in command fire salaries back pay $1,310. Yes, big money. I know. <laughs> Can you just give so a brief, the, brief explanation? I will. So um, the firefighters union contract uh, was negotiated um, at the, uh, their new contract starts at like 2020. Um, that's kind of when the new fire chief came on, and they did not realize that there's a new calculation for officer in command. And that new calculation, what it says is we we're paying them $1.50 per hour while serving as an acting lieutenant. But this new contract says that effective beginning of the contract, the rate will increase to $2 per hour with some conditions. One of them being you have to complete five years of continuous employment with the Manchester Fire Department. You have to complete a board certified fire officer one and instructor one and some other things. Um, so what happens, we would pay them $1.50, um, but there was actually two officers that qualified over FY 20, 21 and 22 that didn't get the 50 cent difference and now they're requesting it. So because this is prior fiscal years, it takes, it takes a, a five sixth or something? I think it's nine tenths. Nine tenths. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So, do I have a motion to approve the $1,310 in officer and demand fire salary back pay? Don't everyone rush. Tom, Tom moves. Do I have a second? <laughs> I'll second it. Dean will second it. <clears throat> <laughs> so that this is an this is an obligation, right? Yes. It's in the contract. Yeah. 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 In the awesome. contract. Yeah. This is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I prefer to think of it that way. Um, I'll take a vote, Peter. Yes. Andy. Yep. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. Tom. Yes. Lloyd. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, why is it the vote on the contract? Right. Because it's. We still have to appropriate stuff. Um, and have we finished negotiating the, the new contract? No. no. And so that's a potential funding issue down the line. Right. So we talked a little bit about so you know, two options. We either put a lump sum and a new line item to cover potential um, wage happen. settlements or come back at the fall town meeting. Yeah. Supplementary. And, and do a supplemental. Yeah, we want the supplemental. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. So we're finished with the budget. Did we go through the revenue and funding sources? Would you freedom for flowers? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we added that to Parks and Rec. And the Memorial School. 
in the morning. Oh. So you gave us a DW <coughs> summary, mm -hmm. which looks like up the anticipated receipts for a total of two million eight hundred and forty nine thousand. Is that good, Mike? Should I do a recap of our conversation or no? Late in the night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're good. Okay. I think we're good. It looks it like they tie pretty well to 2022 actuals, which is kind of what we wanted. Right. I mean, I'm just curious, um, Andrea, do we have any insight into current month uh, excise tax stuff or no? Still too early? Motor vehicle? Yeah, it's still, still too early. early. Still too early. Okay. They've gone out. Yeah, $62.85. Yeah, how would we not know if it was due March 1st, right? If they're all. 15th or something, middle of March. March 6th, I think. Right, but once they're billed, you should know the number. Right. right? Who, who does the billing for us? Treasury Collector, I think. Treasury. Andrew? Jennifer. Yes, the um, assessors get a commitment file from the state and then they submit it to the treasurer collector and then we have Kelly and Ryan print it and mail it. So we don't know what the total on that Yeah, how do we not know the total? The spreadsheet was? Oh, let me see. If I've already been sent out. It's on the column. We can find out. Yeah. We can find out. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't have that packet yet. Oh, okay. So the FinCom annual report, do people have content suggestions or do you want me to just send out what I've done and you can look at it? Yeah, I've, I'm trying to add a section that kind of reflects additional expenses mm -hmm. and dispatch savings. I don't have all those numbers yet, but I'm trying to do a section on that um, and doing sections on explaining the additional staffing increase in funds. You know, one of the things people ask about is, okay, this is this year, what are you thinking about for the next couple of years? And I, I know we <clears throat> haven't put this thing up. I keep looking geographically at that. but. Right. I do think that's a level of diligence this committee ought to do, even if it's only for 20 minutes, just to what what does this year, next year, and the year after look like? Because I think that that final section of the report, you know, yeah. anticipation of 25 yeah. is important. Is, um, so can we see that next week? We can. We, we have that. Okay. So we'll look at it in the next meeting. Yeah. Let me write that down so it gets on the agenda. I just got a quick revenue question. I don't know if this is Andrea or Greg, but the, um, I'm going to call it the Airbnb fee, whatever that's called. Yeah, yeah I, yes. I, uh, oh, that one. I asked, uh, I was just talking to Debbie about that in my office to, to see if we can get some numbers from the state. We, we don't have anything? No, we haven't received any. We should. When did we implement it? Well, so we delayed it until um, October. So. It's, it was the last quarter of 22 that was in place. So we implemented it last October? Right. Okay, so, so, October so they're always a quarter behind. Um, so, but we should be able to get a number soon. Okay. Um, so, Andrew, any updates on grants? <laughs> <laughs> Soon. 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 Yeah. Um, I keep hearing I've that. Got the preliminary indication that we need to wait for the official word. But we're good to go. Yeah. Should be good news. Um, any updates from Leah's on now? Oh, that's CPC. Yeah. So um, they, they revised their list to omit the. Uh, we do have refurbishment of the antique fire truck that we don't own yet. <laughs> 
Marblehead might have bought it because I saw a blurb that they're rehabbing a 1939. You know, <laughs> uh, it seems so coincidental. I was like, what is? Yeah. But well, supposedly right. it's you know it's committed to us, but the, yeah. the guy is not well, so that's why it stalled. So, so Jeff kind of felt it was important that the film town did endorse the CPC project, so they did it um, <coughs> Next item is we have three sets of minutes January 19th, January 26th, and February 2nd. People have a chance to look at those. Mm -hmm. I looked through. Yeah. I clicked up. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from January 19th, January 26th, and February 2nd? So moved. And you moved. So I have the second? Second. Found seconds. How should I do this? I was not here for two of those three meetings. So should I not? I shouldn't vote on. Just abstain. You can abstain. For two, but I want to approve one. Okay, yeah. Is that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this, the second I was here for, but the other general ones I was not here at conflicts. Okay. So I'm going to take a vote. Okay. Peter. I'm, I'm abstain, abstain, yes. Okay. So you're approving the two, two minutes. I am. Okay. Andy. Yes. Dean. Yes, cubed. <laughs> Mike. Yes. Tom. Yes. Maury. Yes. And Sarah, please. I was confused. <clears throat> I thought typically we vote them one at a time. That's what yeah, that's, that's, I thought so right. too, but that's... It's late. <laughs> <laughs> We have new, 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 new procedures. Yeah, or it's like. Um, anything else we need to discuss? No, I'm sure there is. So do you want to so go over each of the articles next time? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The warrant. We'll do the warrant. We'll do the multi-year. Can we get a draft of the? Yeah, of we'll send that out to them. And the annual report. Um, so my plan on the annual report is. Hopefully, to incorporate the rest of these numbers in. If I can figure them out, I'm going to meet with Andrea Monday morning, and then hopefully, I'll be able to send it to Andy so that maybe he can get it up in SharePoint for us. Sure. Um, so people have an opportunity to look at it before our March 2nd meeting. And then I would ask for all updates to be done by end of day on Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. So that I can get it to town hall on Monday. So that'd be the fifth of March, you? Yeah. And I'll get it to town hall on the sixth because they supposed the printer on the seventh. I see. Right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so when does the select board get the warrants? On the sixth. Uh, well, usually we get a packet in advance of our. But I'll give you the <coughs> warrant. I'll, I'll get early next week. We'll have the warrant. Okay. <coughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? You do. So that we use Andy seconds. All in favor? Aye. Yes. 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 Thank you all.